Now let's continue the conversation with two gentlemen who know whereof they speak. First, Skyping in from Connecticut, Newsmax TV political analyst Dick Morris, and via Skype from Atlanta, consultant and pollster Matt Towery of Insider Advantage. Uh, gents, we thank you both for your time. Dick, first to you. Taking a look at last night's results after those horrible attacks in Brussels, how much did those terror attacks, uh, what kind of effect did they have? on the uh, caucus in Utah and the primary in Arizona? I don't think much. Uh, Trump probably moved up a few points uh, in Arizona. Uh, no effect in Utah. Uh, remember, most of the votes, over half of them, were cast early voting. Uh, so uh, it would only be a marginal impact at best. And the final results were basically a wash. Hillary beat Sanders by about 20 delegates, and Trump beat Cruz by about 20 delegates. No big deal. The only thing that was important is they're now 100 delegates closer to having exhausted the pool of available delegates. Matt Towery, John Kasich did not do well at all last night, yet he remains in the race. Uh, do you think anybody is going to make the case to Governor Kasich that he should get out? We've got about a minute right now. No, I don't think so right now. And I agree with Dick. I, I think very little was changed last night after the results that took place of the tragedy overseas. With regard to Cash, he's going to wait and try a couple of blue states, see how he fares, see if he can do well. If he doesn't make it through those, uh, those states, he'll begin to look at that campaign again because there will simply be no case to be made to remain in the race. Well, listen, uh, Matt, we want you to stay put there in Atlanta. And Dick, we know you're seated comfortably in that chair from Connecticut. There is much more to discuss on the political landscape in terms of strategies and tactics in this presidential campaign. In the interim, you heard what Ambassador Woolsey had to say, as well as Messrs. Morris and Towery. Agree or disagree? We would love to get your comments on everything we talk about. And if you want to weigh in, the best way to make sure that I will see your comments is to get in front of the keyboard on your computer and go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Much more ahead as our program continues, so stay tuned. Good to have you back on Newsmax Prime. Also back with us now, our political panel, Skyping in from Connecticut, Newsmax TV political analyst and presidential strategist Dick Morris. Dick, the co-author of Power Grab, Obama's dangerous plan for a one-party nation. And Skyping in from Atlanta, consultant and pollster Matt Towery. Matt of Insider Advantage is also author of the book, News Vesting. Lots in the news, and let's get back to Dick Morris. We heard what Matt had to say about the Kasich question. Whither John Kasich in this ongoing race for the Republican nomination? Well, there are two possibilities. Either Kasich is on an ego trip, uh, which he probably is, or he's trying to amass a sufficient block of delegates to trade them for something at the convention, like the vice presidency. And uh, I believe that Matt is correct, that he's going to wait for a few more blue states to come in, Wisconsin, New York, and Pennsylvania. Um, the problem is, by the time those three vote, the opportunity to defeat Trump will have passed us by. Uh, Wisconsin is 40 delegates, New York is 90, and uh, Pennsylvania is 70-something. So you have almost 200 delegates there. And if Kasich remains in the race through those three states, He'll drain enough votes away from Cruz so that Trump moves ahead and wins in this largely winner-take-all format. It's complicated, but in a lot of congressional districts, Trump would get all of the delegates. Uh, so there's a question of how long we can indulge John Kasich's ego trip. Unless the fix is already in and Trump has promised him something to stay in the race and act as a spoiler. Well, my apologies, uh, something happened with our internet. It's worth noting, uh, Dick, that um, Ted Cruz was very active this morning in the news cycle, visiting just about every network and cable morning show in New York. And uh, over at CNN with Chris Cuomo earlier today, Ted insists that his, his support, his win last night in Utah and his victories elsewhere, show his electability. And he also cited a poll saying that uh, most Republicans realize Trump is, quote, unelectable in a general election. Let's watch and listen. Jeb Bush, Mitt Romney, Mike Lee, and Mark Levin. I mean, you want to talk about 
a broad coalition, ideologically diverse, that covers the entire spectrum of the Republican Party. And, and what we're seeing is, is 65 to 70 percent of Republicans nationally recognize that, that Donald Trump is not the right candidate to go up head to head with Hillary Clinton, that Donald loses to Hillary. Uh, and yet, there is a new poll from Monmouth University saying that a solid majority in the Republican Party believe that the GOP should unite behind Trump. The breakdown is 54% getting behind Trump, 34% for a contested conviction, and 7% unsure. Dick Morris, you're never unsure of yourself. Tell us what you think those numbers mean. Well, that's a phony question. Uh, unite behind Donald Trump. How about unite behind Donald Trump versus unite behind Ted Cruz? Uh, and the alternative to uniting behind Donald Trump is not a brokered convention. It's beating him in the primaries. Uh, let's turn to Matt Towery because there, there is a long way to go. And yet it does appear that, uh, that uh, Donald Trump has shown his ability to win in a lot of different sections of the country, including that big win in the state I used to represent in Congress, Arizona, last night. Is Trump the guy who is just basically setting the pace as the front runner and Matt thereby uh, calling the tune? Well, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be a very nip-tuck uh, matter as to whether he gets to the required number of dele delegates before the convention. Uh, I do agree uh, with Dick that the wording of polls, for example, the poll you just quoted, can, can have a big impact. Uh, but in this case, I, I do think that even if, if others should poll it, you would find a plurality of Republicans at least saying they believe Trump should be uh, given the nomination if he, if he has a substantial lead over the other candidates, which he probably will have. But I don't think that's necessarily what's lining up right now. We're seeing a lot of noise out of Washington, D.C., maneuvering that makes me sort of tend to believe that uh, the powers that be are lining up to try to keep this man from getting his nomination. And uh, I'll have something in particular on Speaker Paul Ryan, who gave a speech today about that. But, Dick, I know you've got something you want to say in response to what Matt just offered us. Yeah. Let me just clarify where we stand. At the moment, Trump is about 280 delegates ahead of Cruz. But there are 160 delegates that Rubio won. And I think these endorsements are piling up and will presage an endorsement of Cruz by Rubio. And I believe he will then release his delegates. And I believe most of them, almost all of them, will come to Cruz. And that would put Cruz within about, I don't know, uh, 100 delegates of Trump. And that's chicken feed. That's chicken feed. That's not a huge difference. The real question is: Can Cruz get Kasich out of the race in time to win or do well in New York and Pennsylvania, uh, which are the huge blocks of delegates? If he can do that and win like a third of the delegates in those states, and win some of the other smaller states like Montana, South Dakota, and so on, that are usually winner take all then everybody is in shape to be able to make it in California, where there are 172 delegates on the last day of the balloting, and New Jersey, where there's a winner-take-all of 51 delegates. So the race is not as lopsided as you'd think. Uh, fair enough. And, and I just have to ask Matt one last question. Matt, only about 25 seconds here. Earlier today, Jeb Bush made it official. He endorsed Ted Cruz. At this point, does that help the Cruz campaign? No, he really doesn't have much impact this year. Um, Jeb's a great guy, but his endorsement is not going to carry very much, either with the national uh, convention or anyone else. J.D., it depends on if his pack goes into the fray on Cruz's behalf. He's sitting on 12 million bucks. Uh, and I, I wish we had that kind of money to buy some more time, Dick. We're out of time. Thanks to you and to Matt Towery. You stay right where you are as we continue.